based on your scan and also uh, tell you what we're going to be doing tomorrow to fix it, okay? okay? So basically the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. It's a very complex articulation. So you've got a ball, this is drawn as if we're looking straight at your right shoulder. That's the ball, that's the socket. Mm -hmm. Above that there's this other joint between the collarbone and the shoulder blade that's called the acromioclavicular joint, the AC joint we call it. This is your humerus, this is your glenoid, so that's called the glenohumeral joint. Mm -hmm. Sandwiched between these two bony arches is your rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. And in particular, in your case, the calcium deposit is in the tendon that's at the very top of your shoulder called the supraspinatus. So we can see it on the x-ray, it shows up white on the x-ray, it shows up black on the MRI scan. So we see this area of what we call hyperechoic area where there's really dark, dark tissue right there that's surrounded mm -hmm. by kind of grayish tissue. The good news is you don't have a detachment of your rotator cuff. So the type of repair that we need to do when we take this out depends on the depth that the calcium goes through the tendon. So it's a, it's a tendon that looks like this, and if the calcium is very superficial, then a lot of times all we have to do, and if it's in a liquid form, we can just put a needle into that area and all that calcium will just come out. But in your case, it's probably, since you've had a couple injections, nothing seemed to help, yours is probably more chalky. Well, Dr. Hancock did insert a needle into this to break it up. Right. But I don't think any x-rays were done following that. Right, no, and it's, it's, I'm sure it's still there. It's just, and sometimes these things change phases so it can go from kind of solid to liquid. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would imagine that yours is more chalky and that we won't see, we, we may see some flex of calcium come out when we put the needle in there, but we're probably not gonna see this kind of tube of toothpaste that we sometimes see when it's in that kind of liquid state. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's very superficial, then sometimes we don't even need to repair the rotator cuff, but if the calcium deposit goes like say through four of the five layers or all the way down to the bone, mm -hmm. then we're gonna need to put some sort of anchoring device in the bone and repair your tendon as well. Okay. And then up at the top of the shoulder, what's happened is over the years, you've developed some arthritis in this AC joint. Mm -hmm. And this looks like this on your scan. So you, bones respond to stress by expanding. So you get a bone spur that comes up like that and up like that. And those don't really bother you other than you can probably just kind of feel them up here at the top of your shoulder. But a lot of times patients don't have any pain from that joint. But on your scan, there's quite a bit of fluid in that joint. Mm -hmm. And then these ligaments get weak up here and that allows this bone to tilt down and that puts even more pressure on your rotator cuff in that area. So it can abrade the surface of it or pressure from this bone on the tendon can create tears on the other side of the tendon. Mm -hmm. So the, the surgery that we're gonna do is gonna address all of these different things. So the first thing we do, we're gonna look inside your shoulder with an arthroscope in the ball and socket joint. We'll look at your biceps tendon, which comes into the shoulder joint. We'll look at all the different rotator cuff muscles. And then we're gonna come up into this space called the subacromial space arthroscopically and we'll identify where the calcium deposit is. And again, if we can do it all arthroscopically, we just kind of scoop this out and not have to do a repair. Uh, if we need to make a little incision, it'll be about this long kind of up on the top of your shoulder. A colleague of mine in Germany showed that doing this kind of work through a small incision, especially in male patients, or if you have to take a lot of bone out, is a little bit better. So I would anticipate a puncture wound in the front, puncture wound in the back. And so once we're up here arthroscopically, we're gonna smooth that bone off, and then we're gonna remove a little bone from either side of that. So ultimately what we hope to see is something that looks a little bit like what it looked like a long time ago in terms of these bones being pretty much coplanar, but there'll be a gap you know, between those. Your body will just form a new joint there. You don't, that's not a joint that needs to be replaced. And then again, depending on the thickness of the calcium deposit, we're gonna either just scoop it out and let your body heal that area, which sometimes it can if it's just a couple of superficial layers, or if it's significant and we're worried about the tendon rupturing, then we'll use an anchoring device down like this with some sutures to repair the tendon. And a lot of times another anchor goes in like that to make sure you have a strong repair. I don't think we're gonna to have to do anything to your biceps. Occasionally we get surprised, we see things going on with the biceps, 
But in your case, I don't think that's what we need to do. Why would Dr. Hancock not have told me about the tear? You have here, you know, this is your arm coming down like this. Mm -hmm. This is your neck. And this is the one joint in the shoulder that will give you the kind of pain you're having going up your neck. Yeah, I'm, I've had a frequently lot go of up, pain go up that. There. So I think, you know, the calcium deposits causing a certain amount of your pain. It's probably causing this severe pain that's about right there and then it's worse when you're coming down, but the pain that's going up into your neck is, is coming from the AC joint. So we're just gonna address all those things tomorrow. Okay, 